today I am taking the big old Africa twin on a little jaunt down southwest. Chucked it up on Patreon, a couple of people said, yeah, we'll come and meet you along the way. So we've got ourselves a bit of a convoy and off we go. Little bit of admin, folks. To all you subscribers, thank you so much for your ongoing support. If you've not yet smashed that subscribe button, don't forget to, and remember to, a ding dong that bell. As ever, all you folk over on Patreon, all you clans folk, thank you so much for all your support. Hopefully, once all this craziness is gone, we can have a good old get together and a proper shindig. It will happen, I promise you, it will happen. Anyway, folks, right, let's get back to it. We are heading west, running a little bit further behind time at the moment. The final destination for today is uh, sort of Land's End. We basically we're aiming to get to Land's End and into a little travel lodge for the end of the day. Let's see how we get on. Down in the All right, do we have everybody in? Got Ian, Matt, can you hear me? Beautiful. Dale, can you hear me? Dale, can you hear me? That'll be a note. Yeah, that, that'll be spot on. Cheers, Ian, thanks very much, man. Sorry, faffing with this bloody jacket. Do not pair. Right, everyone set. You two fall. Off we jolly well. One, two, three. Nationals. Right then, folks, you've joined us. We are about a third of the way across the country. We've just come through a little place called Sherborne. Met up with some more people. So we got ourselves a convoy. Look at the weather. Never mind. Next stop, Exeter. Pick up a few more. And then we'll hit Dartmoor. And that is where you'll join us next. So folks, we have made it past Exeter. We've just met up with the last group who are coming along for the ride today. And now, look, the rain stopped. The sun is trying to come out. I can even see a little bit of, a little bit of blue foot dad up there. Happy days. We've got quite a little posse with us. Who have we got? We have... Oh God, I'm going to try and remember all the names now. We have got Matt, Dale, Peter, Ian, Brian, Andy and Mike, I think. And everyone is in their own little groups of three or six or however many we're supposed to be in. We're all on bikes. We're all wearing face masks. Job done. So what am I thinking of the Africa Twin then? I've got to say folks, the first road review I did on this, I wasn't that taken with the DCT. It felt clunky, it felt, it just felt a little bit alien for me. It felt like it was in too much of a hurry to change up through the gears. So by like 35 mile an hour, I'm in sixth gear. And even when I put it in sport, it held onto the gear a bit, but not, not as long as I wanted. It, it still didn't feel particularly snappy. Just felt a bit sluggish and like the bike needed to go to the gym. Then I had a little chat with my mate Rob and my mate Richie and Mr. Fish. And they all said, oh, and English biker Dan as well. And they all said, get it in S2 or S3. What's S2 and S3, says I. Well, Within sport mode, if you push and hold, it then gives you access from S1, which is yeah, S2, which is the beauty, and S3, which is a proper animal. Very, very aggressive in the settings. S2, in my opinion, is the best one. It holds, oh, a whole load of crap in the road. It holds on to the gears, nice and long. It just transformed the bike for me. And then 
that combined with these um, like Tronic paddles, you know, the up and down buttons that you've got to go up through the box, just makes for a much more engaging ride. So if I'm thinking, say I'm coming downhill like this and the bike's in fifth, ooh, ooh, and the bike's in fifth, like it was there, if I'm thinking to myself, well, it's holding fifth, I don't like fifth, I want to be in third to control the descent down the hill, then you can use the Triptronic, which I've just done there. I do find that you have to use the brakes much more. So it's harder to use. I was trying to change down the box there, but it didn't want to. I was going too fast down the hill and it didn't want to change down through the box, even with the Triptronic. So you're having to get on the brakes and that means you're then braking harder, longer and further into the corner. It's maybe just a question of getting used to it, I don't know. But the S2 and S3s have transformed this bike. I genuinely enjoy riding it now. But I think the DCT in particular just takes too much out of the ride for me, personally. It's very easy to get used to. I jumped on the GS for the first time in a while the other day and um, I was wondering why the engine's screaming at me it's because you need to change gear <laughs> I was so used to being on this thing where you know <laughs> it does it all for you but anyway we're now headed to Dartmoor and I think the plan at the moment is to have a cup of splosh at the top of Dartmoor so hopefully it's not snowing. One, two, three. Well folks, here we are. We're just crossing Dartmoor at the moment. The weather, believe it or not, it probably looks bad on camera, but it's not too bad. It's not that windy. It's not particularly cold. It's a wee bit dry, a bit wet. Oh, some cows in the road. Highland cows! Highland cows! But you know, it's not bad at all. It is stunningly beautiful, Dartmoor. Gorgeous, rugged place. So it is now coming up for 10 to 4. So I think realistically, there's not much point in heading to Land's End today because by the time we get there, especially if we do all the back country twisty roads like I want to be doing, by the time we get there, it'll be dark, we won't see anything, what's the point? So I think what we're planning to do is a couple of chaps are going to turn off once we get to, I can't remember the name of the next little town on the west side of Dartmoor, but they're going to turn off when we get there. And then I think I'll probably figure out a little route up to Red Roof where we're staying in the Travel Lodge and we'll do that. That way we'll get to Travel Lodge at a reasonable time and then we can get up tomorrow where they're supposed to be better and have a bit of a play. So that is the current plan. Gorgeous place, isn't it? Well, morning. Morning, people. You just missed the rain. It is the start of day two, the proper day, because we didn't do too much yesterday, did we? So uh, we are now in Camborne Red Ruth, and the plan today is head down Land's End, have some brekkie, and then start the day. Let's see where we go. The roads were quite slidey and horrible yesterday. There's a few uh, bum clinchy moments. But today, they don't feel too bad at all. Nice little night last night. I ended up with um, five of us, six of us staying this first night. Four in one place, two in a, another little hotel. We all got together for some dinner last night. It was great. Really, really nice time. It's horrible. I really wanted to be doing more of this. This is all, if you don't know folks, this is sort of something organised through the Patreon, through the clan. And the idea there is to be much more social and get out and about around the UK and meet people. But because of Covid, just not being able to do it. So I just posted up on there and said, look, I'm heading to the southwest. If you want to meet up for a bit of a ride, then awesome. Not expecting people to join for the full trip or, you know, stay over on an evening or whatever in a hotel. But people have, so awesome. And today, today is my birthday. 
Happy birthday to me. Woke up to a lovely message from Mrs. Teapot. As usual, nothing from my son. I'll probably get that next month. And a little card from the boys. So thank you very much, everybody. And lots and lots of messages from you folks. So thanks very much for that. Much appreciated. Makes an old man feel very welcome. But anyway, I'm sat in traffic, I'm on a 40 mile an hour road, but I am out on a bike. What's not to like? <laughs> so I have used the Cali Moto app again, as always, to plot one of one of Simon Weir's routes down to Land's End. So we're hugging the coast from St Ives, basically, all the way down to Land's End. And now I'm in a 30. Oh. oh, look at that, proper IEM overtake. Pop out, have a look. What two towards? Put the gas on. Oh, look, 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 look! The second I put the cameras on, 30. This bloody country. It's the south. There's too many people. Left, left at the end. Boys, left, left at the end. Beautiful. Right, we're all here. Let's go. This could be a nice little road. I'm sounding, I'm sounding surprised, but it's one of Simon Weir's, so it's going to be good. I tell you, I followed his route all the way from like my place in Kent, all the way up to my brother's place up near Perth. Just plotted, plotted all these different roads and routes that he had, and it was great. Didn't touch the motorway. It was fantastic. What a great day in the butt on the saddle. You get to see so much more of the country. Oh, look at that! Wow. Sad it's so windy, it would be nice to get the drone up here. That is beautiful. <sighs> 25 miles an hour. Alright, there we go, it's on. I've got Mad Matt behind me on his KTM 1290 Super Adventure. That bike has transformed that look. Wow, he can chuck that thing around. Like these. I'm just taking a lot more speed off for the corners than I maybe would normally in a wider road just because as you've already seen we've had big buses, tractors, all sorts of traffic on these roads so if you met one of those big buses mid corner there's only going to be one winner so be prepared to stop up here or down here That's the remnants of the old tin mines there. Right, that's your uh, geographical and historical lesson over and done with for the day. We'll see you at Land's End. Awesome. Well, we made it folks, we're at Land's End. Start of the day today, got here about 11ish, so we just had a breakfast of uh, pasty chips and beans. When in Rome, 
So here we go, we're right down here, this is Land's End Down in Senin There's a very uh, south westernly point in the UK mainland for those not from around here Plan now is we're going to head a little bit across the bottom um, then we're going to start heading north up to uh, the A39 which is a sort of famous iconic riding road and we're going to follow the A39 all the way across the top of the southwest eventually through like Barnstable, Linmouth, all these sorts of places you'll see when we get to Linmouth's beautiful coastal run and then from there we're going to head across and the destination for tonight is Minehead, not Butlins maybe we'll pop for a beer, I'll have a, I'll have a fresh orange lemonade but uh, yeah, look, beautiful day so far. As far as land end goes, this is a beautiful day. It's only about gale force six at the moment, it's not bad. Hiya. I love this bike. I love this bike. I love it. Oh, look. Oh, yes. Oh. I love this bike. I love it. That was the engine bars, which is what you should have. Well, the engine bars? You need, you need some of them for all them track days. <laughs> okay, wagons roll. Look, there's no bloody escaping you, Dickie Vegas. No escaping you. <laughs> You got them all here. Yeah. Big bike off road, what's that? Facebook page. Oh, is it? Yeah. Ah, okay. Big bike off road, we'll check that out. Off road. Right. Folks, we've got Dickie Vegas now and Dickie Innes. Well, remember, you know Matt, you know Matt from many, many, many a, a vid. Well, Matt's new name is Nice Lad. So we'll get some t shirts made up because he's a nice lad. Thick as fuck. <laughs> right, are we all ready? Everyone good? Beautiful. Oh, off we jolly well. Are we going the right way? Are we going in the out? Oh. Going in the out is the story of uh, Matt's life. Right, so, Land's End on the Africa Twin. Tick. And now we've got all these people to overtake. Woo ha! Interesting. Okay. No, I've never done this one. Whee. That's why you don't want to be caning it down these wee roads. Nationals. Don't know if you can hear that, folks, on the cameras, but you can hear that now it's in the, the sport two mode it just holds the gear a bit longer you can hear the engines revving well it won't do it in sport one as much and it certainly doesn't do it in drive so yeah if you like if you like the more spirited ride with this you need to put it in that s2 or s3 doid like a doiga so we've just done some nice little twisty backcountry roads there, Kalimoto route. We've just dropped two of the lads off, Brian and Mike, thank you very much for coming along gents. They've now had to return back home, crack on with things. So there's about four of us left and we are continuing. No, do a little bit of the A30, then we pick up the A39. And we're going to do the A39 pretty much following kind of the coastal path heading north up through the southwest and the final destination for tonight we've got a, a little sort of guest house booked in Minehead so let's see how the day goes look at that as soon as I put the cameras on we get onto some good fast road and then traffic oh we'll get through it folks don't worry we'll join you when we hit the A39 So we are now on the A39 folks, it's a lovely bit of road, can be a bit heavy with traffic but if you can work your way to the front or you time it right, it is a lovely progressive road that will sweep you from the likes of Nuki 
all the way to Minehead. Cracking road, varies from sort of not quite dual carriageway but two lanes one direction, one lane in another, through to single carriageway like this and then quite thin track over the moors up in the top on the way to Minehead. Lovely road to ride. So how is the Africa Twin coping with all this? The DCT is surprisingly agile. It's surprisingly versatile. You get used to the DCT very quickly. Like once once you find your your place with it, you know, whether whether you're comfortable in drive or you're comfortable in sport or like me, you, you want it a little bit sort of more urgent, a wee bit more aggressive. So you go for the S2, S3 options. Once you've found that and you get used to the box and using the, the paddles up and down, it's actually a lot of fun to ride. And you get used to an automatic box. Now you jump back on, I jumped onto Matt's KTM there for a short little stretch before um, Land's End. And it was weird riding a manual again. I couldn't get used to it. You know, it's almost like you forget that you need to change gear. It's a comfortable bike to be, but you've only got about an hour, hour and a half in the saddle, and then it's like someone flicks a switch and your arse is killing you. Riding position is nice, the pegs are a really nice height, the bars are nice and wide, the screen gives you loads of protection. The controls are generally nice and easy to reach, except I find I just think the indicator switch is in a weird position because it's it's right between the downshift paddle and the horn down there. And I, I find it I find it sometimes I'm either hitting the horn or downshifting when I want to cancel my indicator or I go to to hit the indicators and I'm hitting the horn. I thought it was maybe a question of just getting used to it, but you know knocking on a thousand miles on this bike and I, I'm still doing it so practicalities of the bike itself heated grips once you know where they are they're nice and easy to reach they're lovely they're nice and warm not had it any more than I think three bars on the fire and there are uh, five bars on the fire for this one the hand guards do a really good job keeping the wind off you the mirrors are nice screen is great the bike has got a nice little watertight USB port there, so I'm, I'm powering the phone straight off of it. The luggage makes the bike huge. It makes it massive. It looks really wide. It feels big. And it's very, you're very conscious of the panniers when you filter. More than I even am with the lone rider bags on the tractor. But conversely, you know, you can carry what you like loads of room in the boot all in i like it I'm, i am liking it genuinely i am liking it it's not a gs killer for me but i'm liking it right onward see you in a bit okay folks we have dispatched the traffic and we can now at least get to the speed limit so for me, I didn't like the vagueness in the front, which is kind of, I think, down to the 21 inch front wheel. The 21 inch front wheel is to assist with the off-roading. So I thought, well, the Triumph Explorer was another bike, which to me, I didn't like it in the bends. But what I discovered with the Triumph Explorer is that you have to ride it a bit more like a like an off-road or an enduro type bike, you know, you, you keep yourself pretty vertical and you throw the bike in, you know, like that, boom, you corner like that. So rather than you lead and bring the bike with you, so you're hanging off the bike on the inside, you throw the bike in and sort of keep yourself vertical. So I've just tried that with this bike and lo and behold, transforms it much better in the bends, much better, especially the tight ones. So if you're thinking it's feeling vague, I'd suggest try that. Throw the bike in, keep yourself vertical. And this, the A39, oh, let me come down a little bit, got a bit carried away. The A39, what a stonking riding road this is. Oh yeah. 
still quite a soft ride though sort of walloping along I wonder if I can change that on the hoof here uh, yeah alright down, down, bing, bing beautiful, done ok yeah, it's touch screen ok do you know, already that feels firmer in the arse yeah, that feels a lot better whoa, where am I going now? whoa, sorry I'm just trying to keep out of that shit in the middle but I got a bit extreme about it there we go whoa you can see what I mean, it changes gear just as you put the power on I literally was just putting the power on to go around the corner and it dropped into first and sort of snatched away like, if you had a pillion on the back there you'd scare the shit out of them and they, they would go all stiff and that'll throw the balance off Let's see if it does the same thing here right, yep, again No, no, still in sport, still an S2, same thing. So you're sort of rolling on the throttle, nothing's happening, all of a sudden it just changes and snatches. There's a cracking bit of this road over the moor to um, Minehead, it's awesome. This is a bit like some of the Pico roads, this. Oh, what am I doing? I'll tell you what, my sort of tight twisty riding it's just getting worse and worse and worse yeah did anyone fancy a splosh a couple of splosh we're 20 miles away from the hotel so we normally uh, get fish and chips down here or an ice cream or something Linmouth it is gorgeous isn't it Get the old bikes in there. Beautiful. Look at that. Then come up, one, two, three. Oh, this is a steep old hill, isn't it? Oh, you smell all the clutches. I think on the other side, the other side, is that not like the steepest hill in the UK or something? But this is this is awesome fun. Over the top here, over the moor. Might have to switch you people off. Or the screen might go all blurry. Oh, I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, I'll keep you with me, folks. Come with me over the moors. Got that for a drop down there. Oh, <laughs> long way down. Right, the fun starts. It should be like one day every every month or something like that that is just for motorbikes no other vehicles allowed just bikes right come on Mercedes go for it go for it top thank you very much Matt, if you want to go ahead, pal, fire on. It's it's staying on this road all the way to Minehead.
by me. He's off to. He's gone. Stunning, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. <laughs> Proper look at that. Oh, I don't like not having gears. The suspension on this is a lot better now I've stiffened it up. But it's it's still a little bit wallowy. Like that was quite bumpy back there. But it was still a wee bit wallopy for me. Hey, <laughs> it's gotta be one of my favourite little stretches of road this. Do you want to pull over and change your pants? Well, morning folks, here we are in sunny old Minehead. What a beautiful day it's turned out to be. So we are... We are heading back home now, basically, right east across the country. Got Cali Moto app um, on, plotted a route totally down to Kalimoto, I've had no interaction with it, I just put it on the second most twisty option and we're going to follow that, let's see where we go nice wee place, Minehead oh, that's an old steam train in there I do not see it how it's in drive it's in sixth gear and it's just chugging along I don't know what's going on with the display here it's supposed to be touch screen but it's not doing anything. I've had a few issues with this display. Sometimes it's not coming on. I definitely think there's just too many gadgets on this. There's so much on this bike. It is full of amazing bits of tech. But like chatting with um, a couple of Africa Twin people last night on online about the issues I was having with the tight hairpins, you know, where I'm setting it up in second gear and just at the point where you put the power on to pull you around the tight hairpin the DCT takes over and drops you into first and it lurches forward and they were saying that they think that has something to do with the lean angle some lean angle sensor which thinks you're not going quick enough for the second gear so it's dropping it down uh, and to be honest it's just it just doesn't work but I, I just don't like that that all said it definitely has a place and it's a great bit to get but it would not be my choice for a big adventure bike. But that's just a personal thing. Right, let's hit the road. Ah, there's the signs we like. Nationals! I tell you what, it's nice to play up and down, <laughs> excuse me, through the box with this DCT, using the paddles. Although I'm still hitting the indicator when I want to or the horn when I want to go up the box or down the box. Maybe it's just operator error. Nice lad. I love doing these little scratchy lanes. To see where they go. Shaftsbury. Yeah, the self-cancelling indicators are not working. Hmm. Look at the glider. I'd love to do that. Whoa, we're doing a left here, boys. Left, 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 left. <laughs> Look at this for a track. <laughs> oh, tell you what, it's a nice little cut through. Bong. Onto the 339. So, folks, Matt and Dale have both turned off and headed north. And I'm on the last little run back home. It is peeing it down. It's dark. It's actually a little bit cold. But you know what? I'm toasty warm in my new rocket jacket. Oh. Well, folks, wouldn't you believe it? That's where the battery went. So my final thoughts on the 2020 Honda Africa Twin Adventure Sports DCT. Straight out the gate. I'll say, I get asked, I've been asked this loads on social media when I've been posting the GS or this. For me, you'll be surprised to hear, but the GS still wins supreme for me. This is a good bike. I'm not taking anything away from this. It is a good bike. 
The issue I have with it is that slow speed, tight cornering, where for me anyway, it's still, even though this has got lean angle sensors, it's got IAMU sensors and calibration coming out its arse, but it's still not quite nailed that first, second degree hairpin stuff, where I think I'm okay in second gear, I'm set up for that nice tight bend, you're looking in just a way to touch the power, just as you touch the power, it kicks into first, and all of a sudden the bike lurches. And you know, this is a heavy bike. I'm no shrinking violet, I'm six foot three, I'm 20 stone, as you know, but I get asked this all the time, so that's why I keep telling you. I'm used to moving heavy bikes around. This is a heavy bike. It doesn't need to go far, and then it's gone. Uh, if truth be known, I did lay it down once doing a three point turn where to me, I thought I had it, but anyway, good points. The DCT under speed, making progression, the DCT is great. You very quickly get used to it, and when you jump back on a, a manual bike, I mean, I've stalled the GS a couple of times getting back on it from this because I've just forgotten to pull the, the clutch in. I got so used to the DCT. It's a beautiful system. When you put it into S2 or S3, it totally transforms the bike for me. Drive mode, for me, and apart from being in town, drive mode is useless on the open road. Get it out of drive because it's, it, it gets in sixth gear way too early. But in the town, it's nice just for toddling around. Sport mode, again, is not quite, not quite there for me. Sport 2 or Sport 3, that's where the future lies. That's where the fun is. There are loads of gadgets on this. The dash put me off initially because I just thought there's so much to know. But the general isn't, to be perfectly honest with you. It is pretty simple. It's very self-explanatory. The bike comes loaded with everything. It's got everything that you'd need. Crude control, it's got heated grips, uh, there's spots on it. It's got fully integrated uh, Bluetooth and uh, mobile controls built into the, the, the handlebar controls here already. Uh, it's, it's got everything. It literally has got all the bells and whistles. This is your sort of direct competition for the likes of the Multistrada Enduro, the GS Adventure, and the like. It's not got particularly high brake horsepower or Newton meter figures. You can see that. It's got drive, you know, up to sort of national speed limits. It'll go, it'll give things a run for its money, but above that, the competition will leave this for dead. That said, definitely not a bad bike, just not for me. Thank you so much to all you new subscribers that have come on board. Welcome to the channel. To all you current subscribers, I love each and every one of you. And to all you clan members over on Patreon, what can I say? You're a special breed. All right, folks, look after those that you love. Get on out there, do your thing. But most importantly, most importantly, live your life. Ooh, ah!